when we talk about stroke shaved we're talking about a system whereby you improve golf your way you're not comparing against other people no this is practical advice on how you can lower your score by being you doubling down on you and improving on your weaknesses if you have any the stroke shave system is every golfer's system this is not an elite golfer's system you do not need to be a pro you do not need to compare data against other people except perhaps putting the rest of this is all up to you what is the stroke shave system this is a system whereby we find ways for you to slash strokes in your game quickly thereby building confidence when you build confidence in golf by slashing the strokes quickly you then move up in skill very quickly stroke shave system allows you to find quick wins in your game low hanging fruit for another cliche quick wins to reduce your score quickly so that you can build confidence a lot of people are stuck where they are because they're following junk a lot of people are following junk by putting all the blame on mechanics on statistics on data on talent versus my lack of talent nobody was born swinging a golf club when they came out of the womb unfortunately so please drop all pretenses this is about you the stroke shave system is about your game how to find quick things to improve and thereby building confidence and once you build the confidence you improve at a rapid rate adjusting as you go the system works from high handicap to low handicap you need to be conscious though all the time you cannot put the responsibility onto someone else onto some other third party thing you are the key here okay that's great maddie boom boom but how does it work well it works in a way that we work back from the green the green is key that's supposed to be a key i don't know why i drew a heart let's convert that to a key okay the green is key in the stroke shave system we work back from the green how do we work back from the green i will get into that a little bit later but every decision on the golf course comes down to getting the ball on the green our decisions from the tee from the fairway chipping putting bunkers will center around from the green backwards backward planning reverse engineering for the cliche working back from the green you're going to see in these four areas here which we'll get onto later so let's skip over that for now let's go into the data and the tools necessary to use the stroke shave system a lot of systems out there will rely on data for data driven decisions and will help to improve your score over a certain period of time to be honest i like data i work with data it's a a career i understand data i take the data that you can take millions of data points and i can create visuals and i can create storylines by understanding the reasons behind the data this is the key concept that a lot of people miss when it comes to data you cannot take another person's narrative with the numbers that they've been given that they give to you because i can spin a story i can use language a certain way to create a story to create an emotion in you or a drive in you to want to do something else I, you can use the same numbers the same statistics and you can use a negative or a positive sentence you can focus on the minority or the majority whatever you want to do with numbers you can manipulate opinions what i'm talking about for data for us though we are not comparing data versus other people there's no field in amateur golf there is no field this is what the average 18 handicap does from distance from the tee bro it doesn't matter because it's not you putting your trust in this the data priests is going to be your downfall but the most important is to understand the reality of how you play golf so when you understand yourself you get better at golf there's no two ways about it you are not going to get better at golf by putting your 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 golf game into the hands of other people it's in your hands so the data we are talking about only reliable data we have is pga tour now in my opinion the only area in the game we can all be as good as the professional the only area in the game we can all be as good as a professional 
is inside wedge range and on the green. So we will compare data in that respect. PGA Tour data, putting, chipping and inside wedge range. We will not be using data compared to other handicap like handicap golfers. It doesn't work. The whole point of stroke shaved and the whole point of way of the play is we're not trying to be something we're not. We're trying to be a better version of ourselves. Therefore, we take what we do in our data and we improve on that. Okay, you're not hitting any fairways. You're hitting an OB all the time. Hey, it doesn't matter. There's no data to compare. You know your game. You have to go, well, I'm going to stop hitting an OB. How am I going to do that? Ba, ba, ba. We get awareness, we find solutions, and we, once we're aware of problems, we can then give a solution to fix the problem. We are not relying on other crap. Now the tools we are going to need during the stroke shave system, you're going to need very simply, I love them, I love them so much, notebooks, okay? You're going to need a notebook. I highly suggest a small one like this that fits in your pocket, that flips this way, not opening like a normal book. You want to get one of those. We're going to be taking notes on our game, distances, our tendencies. We're going to have a book about ourselves, not a journal, you're not writing a... Today I felt betrayed by my caddy because she told me left edge and it was actually outside the right. No, we're going to be talking about, okay, 40%, 50% swing with the 56 degree, with the 60 degree. This is the distance it carries, this range. Mm, I like left to right putts. Uphill right to left is our problem. Well, I'm going to practice my right to lefters. Whatever it is, we need a little notebooky. The data we're going to collect, you can use the same tools I'm talking about, such as the ShotScope V3. This is going to track your data. Now, your data. I'm not interested particularly in what other people are doing. I'm interested in my game. I track it over a spreadsheet. You can go that in depth if you want. I'll put the screen grab over here so you can see what it looks like. Or you can just use the basic stuff that comes with these watches. A V3 ShotScope, beautiful piece of machinery. You put sensors in the top of your club, it detects it after a practice swing and it's going to track your distances and that kind of stuff. We want to know that. The other tool you can have is a Voice Caddy Swing Caddy SC300. Now this thing you can own and take with you and refine your distance numbers because as you'll see, there's certain things about you you need to understand and you can track that with data. Remember, your data. Don't worry about other people. You know, when I came back to golf, I hadn't played in about five or six years. I was hitting my six iron and the other dude, definitely not swinging much faster than me, was hitting a freaking eight or seven iron. I'm like, what's going on here? Now, me comparing to him was incorrect because his clubs were five or six degrees lower loft than mine. I didn't know that. So that's where data and imperfect data and imperfect understanding of the data will lead to bad decisions because in my jobs that I've done before and that I still do, the basic rule in data is that you need perfect data to create the perfect story, to create the true story so you can understand what's going on. If you create the best story, the best narrative, the best understanding of the data, but the data is not perfect, then your story is wrong. Then what is the point? That's the point. The other tool you want to have is a range finder. This is the ShotScope Pro LX. I really like it. It's a very accurate and very quick um, piece of machinery. Now these don't track anything. That's just for you to understand. Okay, so you're getting your distances from a watch or from a um, launch monitor and then you're using that on the course to be able to find distances to things and use the, the understanding of your distances and your data and your shot tendencies from your notebook to plan on the golf course with a rangefinder. You can use the watch to plan, up to you. I would recommend the watch for anybody above basically a, a single digit handicap, so 10 plus, just use a watch, front, middle and back of the green. The rangefinder I would recommend if you really do need more specific distances. I find it, it's, for me it's the best, but it's up to you. Now, the next part of the stroke shave system and literally any system, any training, any lessons you take, you have to commit and believe. You have to have commitment, you have to have belief. If you do not believe this will work, you do not need to give me five reasons why it won't. One reason is enough. 
Stay at home. Don't try it. It's okay. Live in delusion. I don't mind. But you have to commit. You have to first believe it works. So you give it a try. Trust. Verify. Keep what's good. Don't use what's not good. Very simple. Very simple thing. It's a journey. Golf is a journey. It never stops. You will never understand golf. You will die. You will die one day not understanding fully golf. And you will never be perfect at golf. Golf is not a game of perfect, but you have to commit. It doesn't matter what anybody tells you that works. This is the reason why you try something for two, three rounds, five months, six months. It works. It works. And then slowly you start slipping back to what you used to do because you lost the commitment to the process. You lost the commitment to the lesson. You cannot lose commitment. When I talk about commitment, what are we talking about in commitment, players? We are talking about commitment to the process. We're talking commitment to the shot, to the round, to the method. We're talking about commitment to your pre-round, your post-round. We're talking about commitment to your thoughts. We're talking about commitment to every single aspect of golf. When you arrive, are you there in time to not rush? Do you leave? Do you pack up your stuff and then make it ready for the next round without having to do anything at home? No stress. Just throw the clubs in the car and go play. Are you committing to the method we're going to talk about? Or are you going FOMO, YOLO, and you're trying to find 700 other reasons why it doesn't work? Then it's not going to work. Are you committed to your round? Are you committed to each shot in the round? Are you committed to your process that, ha that leads to every shot? Your process that leads to every shot, which makes an entire hole, your whole plan. Are you committed to your round of 18 holes, all planned out, shot by shot, process by process? Are you committed to better thoughts? Are you committed to being able to think differently and accept the fact that you are the key to better golf? You are the key to better golf. I don't give two Ina Kleiner Scheises what anybody talks about. I don't have talent and I don't have prime and <laughs> I don't have time for victims and whiners, okay? Nobody came out of the womb swinging a golf club, not even Tiger Woods. Yes, he was trained. People who hit the ball better than you, they had fathers who were throwing balls and they were playing spat and ball sports. Maybe they didn't. Maybe they had a lot of friends and they used to go play baseball, cricket, hockey, whatever it was. They went and they hit balls. That's why they hit the sweet spot. Do you? Maybe not. Maybe you played football, water polo, rugby. No bat, no ball. Doesn't matter. You can still get better at golf. Anybody can get better at golf. If you've been stuck for 10 years, 15 years, 5 years, 20 years, it's because nobody's given you the good news. This is part of the good news. But you need to commit. You need to change the way you're thinking because nothing changes until you change. Because in this system, you are the key. You. And part of that is that you cannot focus on swing mechanics when we're talking about stroke shaved. If you're doing swing mechanics, that is in your practice. That's your practice with your coach. It does not come to the cold golf course. It does not come into your plan. You do not bring swing mechanics into the system. The day you bring swing mechanics into this, it's basically putting a drop of poison into a huge bucket of water. It's now all infected. That stays on the practice range, okay? We're going to talk about the four P's, players. The four P's of the, the stroke shape system. Play, plan, practice, psyche, e, psyche. And the fifth one, which encompasses all of this, is a process. So it's really five P's, with this one being the biggest capital P. We're going to talk about this in depth. Play, back from the green, using your data, committing, and making it about you. All four of these plus the process will include all of this. Please stay tuned because we're going to get into the weeds with this stuff. And if you're not ready, that's okay. Come to the light side of life. Stroke shave system. We don't need none of that education. Okay. We don't need no education. All we need is a Dacha plantation. Now in the stroke shave system, you are the key to better golf. You are the key to improving your golf. You. Now what do we mean by you? Very... Uh, Okay, that sounds a bit new agey. No, that's number one. This is a prerequisite. You have to understand yourself. You have to understand you. You have to understand you. You don't have to be anybody else in the stroke shave system. 
but you need to firstly know your distances. If you can get the ball airborne relatively often, maybe 80%, 70% of the time, you're starting to hit the center of the club face, you need to know your distance. If you're a very good golfer, you still need to know your distances. A lot of people are, are in delusion about their distance. They take their rollout distance. No, we only want to know carry distance specifically here in the system. Of course, you want to know your rollout distance, but you need to start with carry. Once you know how you can carry the ball, you can then start to plan. Without this information, we cannot plan. Planning is part of the stroke shape system to work back from the green. Without a plan, you are lost. And if you're playing whack fuck, you're probably not going to be scoring your best score. You need to plan. If you plan, you can't play whack fuck because you planned it. Because you knew about yourself. The whole point of what a play, way of the player stroke shave system is to learn about yourself. Now, not only do we need to know our distances, we need to know our shot shape. What is your shot shape? Now, I don't mean your general shot shape. Of course I do, but I also mean your general shot shape by each club. Do you see how granular this is? You are unaware currently of your game. You are unaware. What I'm trying to do is bring you an awareness. If I can bring you an awareness to your game, you create new solutions. You start to get better understanding. Now, the distance is key. The shot shape with each club is key. You want to know what each club does. My seven wood draws only. It doesn't do anything else. It only draws. The shaft very flexible. My irons generally are quite straightish. Sometimes when I'm trying to step on one, I hit a slight tug, little tug. That's why it goes a little further and I close the face off a little bit, maybe smother it a bit. It goes a little left, but I know that. So like when I try hit a, a nine iron 165, I know I'm stepping on it, so I'm just a little bit right. It pulls it over to the left. You want to know your shot shape with every club. But on top of that, you want to know your tendencies. It should all be going into your notebook, okay? Whatever you do, you need that little notebook. You know, the little one like this with the little rings here that flips over. You want to be jotting this stuff down. Now, your tendencies, we're not talking just about freaking, I like to drink a coffee before the, before the round. I know, I'm talking about your shot tendencies. How about when you're in the first four holes? What are you doing in the first four holes? How, what happens to your shots in the first four holes? Do you have a specific shape? Do you hit it 10 yards? Do you hit it 10 yards less? Do you hit a fader, but then it straightens up throughout the round? What are you doing when you're tired? And I mean, you know, you can be exhausted from um, not sleeping. You can be just fatigued from potentially exercise, potentially you're unfit and you're playing around and, and you know what happens when you start to feel tired in the muscles. What do you do? You refer my first four holes. I know I'm probably going to lose about five to 10 yards. So I just club up in the first four holes. I'm not sure what shape's coming out. So I'm aiming straight down the center of the green. If it fades off to the right side or draws to the left side, we'll be okay. Once the round goes on and I establish where the ball's going, then we can start planning nicely. But in those first four, we understand we're going to be scrambling a little bit just to get through them, to warm up. Okay, because I don't go to the range. There's not many ranges at the courses here. And I play, I tee off also about 6.30. Now, if I have not slept enough, I know. I can't use a 60 degree, 58 degree around the greens ever. It's going to be a failure. It's the first thing that goes. My padding also needs extra concentration, staying still, committing, not rushing because I'm exhausted, I'm tired. Now, when it comes to that, that's mainly short game. When I'm fatigued or I'm tired or I'm unfit, I know that the ball starts going leftish. I know that. I know that because I get a bit lazy on the turn. I just smother it or whatever I do. I don't know. But I know it goes left. We need to know our tendencies. You have to understand that. You see your tendencies when you're tired or exhausted. When you haven't slept enough, that's nothing you can do. But you can go to start sleeping earlier. Stop having that extra beer. Stop having that extra wine at night or, or staying up for pointless things, scrolling through, scrolling through Instagram or whatever. You can change. When you're fatigued, you're not fit enough. You're, you're breathing heavy. You, you, you're not able to make it the whole way around the course. Potentially you're getting hungry. What happens when you're hungry? What happens when you're hungry? 
Okay, did you bring a, a, a nutritious snack or did you bring sugar to the course? These are the things you want to establish about yourself. Listen to yourself and change them. This is not hoo 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 woo 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 woo. This is you. You know yourself, but something inside you wants to sabotage. And you're not allowed to sabotage yourself in stroke shaved. You're only allowed to win. We only win in this. Part of knowing about yourself is your favsies. What are your favsies, player? What not only are your favsy clubs, but your favsy shots and distances. So you've got your favorite clubs, let's say this, this, and this, and this. Now you can go granular and say, like, what shot is that? You know, it's a, it's a little draw seven wood that goes 245. Yeah, you like a little straight four iron that goes 220. You know, you like a six iron. You can, you can have three levels. My six iron, I like a step on. I like a punch. And I like a normal. And the normal is going to go straight. The step on is going to go slight tug left. And the punch one's going to fade a little bit. This one's going to go 200. This one's going to go 185. This one's going to go 170. Now, when you can understand your favsies, your favsies, your favorites, okay? If you don't understand the lingo here, favsies is favorites. When you understand your distance, your shot shape, your tendencies, your favsies, you can now begin to plan a golf course like a biaus, okay? You can go around the golf course and you can just make the golf course your own, okay? You control the golf course, the golf course does not control you. You control the game within, so you can control the game without. This is how the stroke shape system works. You have to understand you. There are more things, such as how you handle pressure, etc. But let's just stick to this for now. This is more physical. This is more practical. Know your distance, carry and roll out, know your shot shape by club, know your tendencies, know your favsies. I think we can do one more because we do come down to the short game a lot. And this one is a French phrase called wedge partial. Now a partial wedge or a wedge partial <laughs> is, is a wedge that you're not hitting full. Now, there's a lot of confusion here about what you should do with this. Some people say the clock system. Some people say learn what goes 50 yards, what goes 60 yards, etc. What I say is f all of that and go and take whatever wedges you have. I would say if it's me, I'm going to take my 51 degree, my 56 degree, my 60 degree or 58 degree. And I'm going to swing all of these at 50%. The same swing. You swing the same swing, let's say, and then you're going to get a range. So the range on a 60 degree will probably be like 35 to 40. This one's going to be like 45 to 50. And this one's going to be 50 to 60 yards. So you're not trying to shoot a number. You're trying to shoot a feeling of the amount of power you have. You can use a clock system, but look what, I don't know, freaking nine o'clock, whatever you call it. But whatever you do, just do the same thing over the three wedges. You're going to need these shots because no matter how much we know our distances, our shot shape, our tendencies and our favsies, we are going to screw up. And so we need a wedge partial. Now a wedge partial can be worked out like that. You can even do your nine iron or your pitching wedge if you like, whatever you feel, but just make it a feeling. It doesn't have to be 50%. Just make it something consistent over all three wedges. That way you can understand your distance with them. How do we do it? Well, you go and stand in an open piece of ground. Potentially, if you can hit it onto a green, that'd be great. If not, just judge where it lands and how much rollout it's getting. Then go, leave something where you hit it, take your rangefinder, go stand at the balls where they roughly landed, and then go. R eliminate the, the worst two and the, wor and the best and the longest two, like the shortest two and the longest two, and then just shoot back to where you were hitting. That's going to give you your range from from the one closest to you to the one furthest from you. That's probably going to be a five to eight yard range. You can do that with that. Remember, write it down in here. Take this to the course. And you know what? You're going to improve your golf. Probably if I just gave you this, you probably improve your golf by four shots, just like that. But we're going to get into more sticky weeds.